I am now pleased to welcome to the stage Congressman-elect Dan Muser, a Republican who will represent Pennsylvania's 9th District in the upcoming Congress. Bob and Dan, over to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. Uh, yeah, right here. Okay. So, um, first off, what, what are the big issues um, for you, uh, agenda-wise and in your district, when you were on the campaign trail, what were people talking about? Well, uh, certainly jobs, economy, um, wage increases, uh, the, the tax reduction plan was uh, was a very positive development for the uh, for the ninth congressional, and we're uh, we're a very middle income uh, district, uh, rural uh, district, um, a lot of agriculture, a uh, fair amount of manufacturing, and and uh, uh, you know primarily small business. So they were very appreciative of the small business tax cuts and and, and, and the family. Um, uh, lower uh, income taxes. Uh, people cared a lot about um, illegal immigration, uh, so that was uh, certainly top of mind. Uh, but also just a general positiveness about what we're trying to do uh, w with our country. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say people are uh, worked up about gridlock, but what they are worked up about is not getting things done. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of head shaking that goes on as to why we can't set an agenda and execute a plan. And you know, I was in business for 25 years. Um, the whole objective of business, you, you get a group together, you, you set out a mission for your company, you lay out the plan, and, and until there's a better plan, you, you execute as, as well as you can. You know, I, I, was, I served as revenue secretary for the Commonwealth, and you know, we did the same thing there. And we, we, uh, we did some good work for the people. Um, so, but in, you won your, your uh, campaign pretty easily. Uh, 60 to 40. Wouldn't call it easily. We won by a good margin, but it wasn't easy. Okay. Um, but why did? Why do you think House Republicans lost their majority? Well, uh, I think there was a obviously there was a strong turnout uh, by those who were not voting Republican. Uh, there was a very strong turnout all around. Um, I, I, I think in general that the understanding of the accomplishments was not. Uh, was, was not necessarily at a high level. I do think the previous Congress and the President uh, did move the ball upfield, move, move things forward, uh, but there was still uh, a, a fair amount left to be desired. Uh, so there was, there was a, a, a little bit of that frustration, uh, but, but the, uh, uh, the, the blue was, were, were energized, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Democrats and, and many independents who, who didn't feel the positiveness that have occurred over the last couple of years uh, were, were more energized. And, you know, there's a lot of data, of course. I think most of us here know the data that exists of the low unemployment and the increase in wages and how it's affected demographics from all walks of life. And, and uh, so many positive things. What I always felt was more important was what I heard from, from my constituents. And, and it was a positive nature to things. But, you know, it was, it was a midterm election. Uh, we did, of course, the Republicans did have many uh, retirees. Uh, and so yep. that, that certainly affected it. In Pennsylvania, we had redistricting, uh, which w under the redistricting, it was really just a, a, a strong move and a successful move on the part of, uh, of you know, frankly, the, 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 the left to, um, to change districts, uh, which really changed at least three. We ended up losing four. Uh, so, so, you know, I think it was a, a number of um, factors. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was leadership election uh, on your side of the aisle yesterday behind closed doors. Uh, Kevin McCarthy won. Can you say whether you supported McCarthy or Jordan? Um, I, I like I like them both very much. I like uh, what Kevin McCarthy has been doing for a while now. I do think he's a principled conservative. I, I, I think his focus is on what's best for our country, what's best for America, what's best for the people. I think he's interested in a government of the people, uh, and, and he's a constitutionalist. Uh, Jim Jordan's, uh, I, I admire him. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a tough guy. I think he's a great American. Uh, I think he's, he's doing what he's doing for the right reasons. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll say, I, I, in the end, I actually told Jim Jordan this, even though it was secret ballot, I, I did support Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think uh, can be done in the new Congress when, when you come back in January, you're sworn in officially? Where do you see common ground? I mean, there's so much disagreement, polarization <coughs> on immigration, on the border wall. What are the areas that you see? Uh, maybe we could get a deal on that. 
Well, I think we got to start what's best for we the people, and that's not a campaign uh, slogan. I mean, uh, we, we need to work on truly not what's in the interest of special interests or self-interest and, and what, what's my district look like and what's the next election going to look like. I mean, let's lay out a plan again that's, uh, that is focused on what's best for uh, the people that we serve. And that, that, that's what I've come here to do. So, so it does start with putting more money in their pockets. Right? I mean, increasing the disposable income, making the tax cuts permanent. I do think uh, the Affordable Care Act needs real work. I mean, a typical family of four in the 9th Congressional is now paying $25, $26, $2,700 a month with deductibles of six to $7,000. Uh, that's almost like not having insurance. So, uh, unless there's something catastrophic. I'm certainly for keeping um, pre-existing conditions and, and finding that level of common ground. But people need more choices on health care. Uh, and we, we need, we need low-cost, high-quality, affordable care. I don't like at all what's going on with the pharmaceutical industry uh, with, with the increase in uh, uh, brand-name drugs mm -hmm. and the inability in the past to get uh, generic drugs, you know, the lifting of the gag order. Uh, so, some people found that incredible, that that actually existed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the, the fact that, that we pay 250% more for drugs than Europe I mean, you know, what's going on? Are we, are we, uh, are we, th those are our allies? You know, that gets into that whole, okay, you know, we, we're, we're, we, we want our friends, but we're, we're not going to be martyrs, we're not going to be pushovers either, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that leads to the, the, the tariff issues as well uh, uh, that, that occurred and some of the trade issues. But, you know, these are things that we, we need, we need some corrections, we need some reckoning that, frankly, are interested in, in the, 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 the people. What do your constituents say about what President Trump is, is doing on trade? We've talked to a lot of Republicans in Congress that are they're nervous about uh, the tariffs and, and what he's done on trades. Others say, no, he's got he's to push for a better deal on NAFTA. Yeah, well, you know, whenever you're changing things that have existed for a long time, it is a little unpredictable, and it, and it does make, make some nervous. Uh, in many cases, look, back in 1996, NAFTA had a place. Uh, but, but, but today it needs to be redone, and I think the president's addressing that head on. Uh, you know, our dairy industry in Pennsylvania and, and, and many places is dealing with, was dealing with a 200 percent tariff uh, in, in, in Canada. Uh -huh. So that's not, and yet they were selling uh, their dairy in the, uh, in, in the U.S., in New York and, and uh, elsewhere. So, you know, these are not things that we just can continue to live with. Uh, I, I like the goal of fair, free and reciprocal. Frankly, who would argue with that? But I like, I like even the, the stretch goal of zero percent tariffs. I think we would see such a boom. I mean, we in the country, our entrepreneurs, make the best products and services, and we have the best food. Um, I, I think the whole world would benefit if we could get to that level. Uh, we've got a couple minutes left. Uh, open up for questions, and if you can wait for uh, the microphone, just raise your hand if you have a, a question for Repelic Muser. Over here. Hi, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, would you support any sort of DACA deal as a sort of compromise from the Republican side to get some sort of funding for border security? Yes, I would. I, I'm interested in negotiating. Uh, that's the, the word I use, compromise, fine, whatever we want to call it. But yes, we, we need to find common ground and move things forward so, so people feel that we're making incremental gains. If we can't get the, the big Hail Marys, the, the Grand Slams, or the whatever football or baseball analogies we want to use, uh, we, we need to um, make some improvements, and I would be favorable to, uh, I, I believe we could say what the President put on the table as far as border security, some funding for the, for the wall uh, uh, as a compromise for DACA. I, illegal immigration comprehensive reform is necessary, um, and I don't think it's overly complicated, but I do think it falls into various buckets. Uh, like, for instance, our agricultural industry needs the H-2A, which is a bill presently right now for H-2C, allowing for three-year visas. I think this thing could be worked out if we take the politics out of it and truly lay out what's in the interest and respect all, all um, stakekeepers, such as the taxpayers, those who want to enter our country, uh, and, and, and the law uh, that, that exists today. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'd be favorable to that. Uh, now the leadership elections are over, do you think that the House Republicans, they were fractured certainly in the last Congress on, 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 on health care. Do you think that the House Republicans will, are more united now, the leadership election is over and going forward into the next Congress? 
Uh, well, I, I, I hope so. I think we, we, we kind of get that um, uh, we uh, could have been more successful here, probably if we would have gotten more done. Uh, so we need a good plan. And I, I, I think uh, Leader M M McCarthy will lay out a plan. Uh, and I think there's some, some good people that I've gotten to know that will weigh in and, and then, you know, let's get to it. Uh, but yes, those issues that, that, that the people want us to act upon uh, are, are very important. You know, there's, there's a caucus known as the, the problem solvers. Uh -huh. You know, they've, um, they're, they're laying out some plans and trying to negotiate and bring things together. I'm very interested in, in participating with them. Uh, if we can, um, again, lay out a plan and do the things that so many people talk about, uh, we, we should have a, a reasonably successful two years. We shall see. Well, thank you for joining us. Please thank Rep-elect Muser for joining us. And I hand it back to Jack.